Debriefing Investigation 10.1 How do the substances in a chemical reaction affect the amount of thermal energy? Investigation 10.1 We were taking copper chloride and adding metals like aluminum foil to the copper chloride to watch them react. As the copper chloride and the metal react, the contents of the beaker got quite a bit hotter, showing that thermal energy was being produced. We added a thermometer to the reaction to see how much thermal energy was being produced with each metal. In this reaction, the copper chloride is rearranging its atoms with the aluminum so that they form a new substance, aluminum chloride and copper. In the process, we're seeing that there's chemical energy stored in the substances of copper chloride and aluminum, stored in the bonds between them. The factors that affect chemical energy are the substance and the mass. Substance meaning that steel wool produces less thermal energy and aluminum foil produced more thermal energy in the reaction. The results from Investigation 10.1 showed how substance can make a very big difference in how much energy there is available to us. The aluminum foil had a much different result than the steel wool. Mass is also a factor for chemical energy. If we put more aluminum foil and copper chloride together, we would expect to get more thermal energy out of the reaction. The net result of our chemical reaction is that chemical energy is being converted into thermal energy. After completing this lab, we should take the time to add what we've learned to our scientific principles page. Chemical energy is energy stored in the bonds of molecules and released during chemical reactions. The factors that affect it are the substances being reacted and the mass of those substances. We will also want to add chemical energy to our conversion chart and then find the arrow leading from chemical energy to thermal energy and color it red so that we can show that in the lab we have converted chemical energy to thermal energy. Fuels that we burn such as coal, natural gas, and gasoline are all great examples of chemical energy. Another example are the chemicals inside batteries. Debriefing, Investigation 10.2. How does the voltage in a circuit affect the brightness of a light? So for Investigation 10.2, you're trying to understand how does the voltage in a circuit affect the brightness of a light. So in a way, our independent variable is really the amount of electrical energy. And the factor of electrical energy that we're manipulating is the voltage of the circuit. And the units for voltage is volts. Then the dependent variable of the lab is the amount of light energy that you were measuring with your phone. And the, you're gonna measure the brightness of the light. And the unit for the brightness of light is lux. It might be worth noting that you wouldn't refer to the independent and dependent variable by units. Like you wouldn't say that the independent variable was the volts of the circuit and the dependent variable was the lux of the light. Rather, you would actually talk about it in terms of voltage or brightness. Because it doesn't make sense, for example, to say instead of saying like um, the distance of all rolls, you wouldn't say something like the centimeters. All right, so make sure you distinguish between the variable and the units for the variable. So possible controlled variables for this lab. Ones that might make a big difference for the outcome of the experiment could include, for example, the size of the light bulb, except it would be a little bit more scientific to actually refer to it as the wattage of the light bulb rather than the size of the light bulb. Another thing could be the size of the wires, but we wouldn't call it the size or the thickness of the wires. We could instead talk about the gauge of the wires. And then another possibility could be the material of the wires. Notice that these wires are made of copper and they conduct electricity differently. In addition, the environment of the room plays an outcome for the experiment because if you only want to measure the brightness coming off of the light bulb, you use this paper tube to darken everything else except the light bulb. So it could be we want to block out all the ambient light in the room as a controlled variable. And then lastly, each individual battery has a certain brand and it's 
a certain age, so it depends how much of the chemical energy was used. And also, um, the voltage of each battery is 1.5 volts, which contributes to the success of your experiment. The result of the lab shows that as you add more voltage to the circuit, the brightness of the light increases. However, I want to draw your attention to a few things. For instance, the graph is not completely linear or a straight line. It's actually curved. The reason for this result is the light is a certain wattage and it's designed for a certain amount of voltage to light up. As we get closer to the correct voltage, the light bulb reaches its maximum brightness that it was designed to do. It's like the sweet spot or the Goldilocks effect. It's just the right amount of voltage to get just the right amount of light for that light bulb. The other thing that I want to point out to you is the graph will not increase in brightness infinitely. It's not like you can line up 20 batteries and you get this super crazy bright light. Rather, if you line up 20 batteries, you're going to burn out the light because it's not designed for that voltage. And I know some of you were hoping for like a glorious explosion of the light bulb, but actually it just kind of fizzles out and it stops working. The lab skill for this particular lab was to be able to build a circuit. And we want to review with you some of the common mistakes that we saw when students were attempting to build a circuit. One of the problems that we noticed when students tried to set up the circuit is they did not have their batteries all facing the right direction. They all need to face the same direction. Notice the middle one is turned the wrong way. Your light might light up a little bit, but it won't light up with the full voltage of all three batteries. Now the batteries are all facing the same way, and you could see that the light completely lights up. I think the most common problem I saw was students having metal not touch metal. Notice how the metal is touching the insulation wire. You need to actually clip metal onto the exposed copper wire to have a path for the electrons to follow. Now it lights up. One other issue that we came across was students not actually completing the circuit. There needs to be a complete circuit or path for the electrons to flow. If it's an incomplete path, the electrons are not going to flow and therefore the light cannot light up because there's not electrical energy. Here is an example of a correctly built circuit. Metal touches metal, all the batteries face the same way, and it is a completely closed circuit. Here is a diagram to show the energy conversions and transfers in a circuit. So starting on the right, you can see a battery has chemical energies. There are chemicals inside a battery that have a chemical reaction that releases electrons that start moving through the wire. Remember that the movement of electrons is considered electrical energy. That electrical energy is transferred from the wires to the light bulb, where that electrical energy is converted or changed into light energy that lights up a filament in the light bulb, and then you see a bright light. Now, that is not the entire story. Notice there are arrows pointing away from the light bulb and away from the battery. If you use a device with a battery or light up a light bulb, you would notice it gets warm. This is thermal energy. That means that the light bulb is not 100% efficient. Not all of the chemical energy becomes electrical energy and it goes straight into making light. Some of that energy is being used to make heat or thermal energy. This is what we call an open system, meaning that the energy doesn't just stay in the system of the circuit. Rather, that thermal energy is being released into the surrounding area. Let's update our principal page with our final forms of energy. Electrical energy is the movement of electrons influenced by current and voltage. We manipulated voltage in this lab. The final energy is light energy, which is a movement of light waves that's influenced by brightness and color. We measured the brightness for the dependent variable in this lab. As we saw in the lab, chemical energy from the battery converts into electrical energy. And that electrical energy eventually gets converted into light energy that lights up the light bulb. Hopefully, the metaphorical light bulb has gone off in your head and we've been able to shed some light on the topic of chemical, electrical, and light energy for these labs. Now, it is totally legitimate for you to go back to your labs and adjust your answers before you officially submit it based on anything you might have learned in this video or mistakes you might have realized that you have made. Do a good job. Good luck on tomorrow's quiz.